with Rebecca Gordon, and we are turning these into these. That's right. Isn't that good? Fried green tomatoes. We are making fried green tomatoes. Okay. We are also making homemade mayonnaise so that we can make the ultimate Mm -hmm. tomato sandwich. That is one of the South's favorite sandwiches. Love it, love it. Okay. And it's high time to do it uh, okay. this time of year. So All I'm right. going to go ahead, I'm going to actually drop this little tomato in. All right, now um, you said you don't, like, you don't like to do a lot of flavoring in here because you don't want to take away from the flavor of the tomato. Well, I don't like to do a lot of heavy breading. Mm -hmm. And so what I have in my dredge mix here is just um, some plain cornmeal, mm -hmm. a little flour, okay. and I'm using a seafood seasoning today. A lot of the seafood seasoning blends We'll use celery salt as the main ingredient, and so it just pairs that. really so nicely. So you're using Old Bay, and I love Old Bay on my shrimp, but I've never thought about putting it on the tomato. Yeah, and I love to use seasoning blends when I fry because you're only having to use one or two ingredients, okay. you know, and I've got a little salt in here, too. All right. But um, it has, you know, pepper and ground red pepper and all that. So that's in our blend, and then just a little buttermilk, extra um, Old Bay, and then some, an egg for okay. our dredge mixture. So we got those um, frying in some canola okay. oil. Got a cast iron skillet. Yeah, okay. and actually, now, while you're frying, you do want to keep that temp on there. So I'll, every now and then, I'll stick it in just to make sure we're up to temp at 360. Well, I was gonna say, before we came to you guys, she was in here, you know, making sure it was right, so. You, you don't, don't want anything to burn. Right. Right. And you okay. and you don't want it you don't to want to be soggy. Right. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so the mayo for the mayo san the tomato sandwich. Yes. Now you can pick up your commercial mayo, but this is just more special. I'm using a hand mixer today. I've got some whisk attachments on there. Okay. And we're just making a simple emulsion. So in the bowl I have one egg yolk. I'm gonna add a pinch of ground red pepper so and just some the salt. Yolk. Right. Okay. Um, a couple of teaspoons of lemon juice. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to turn the mixer on low. And we are going to add two thirds of a cup of canola oil to this. Okay. And you just want to add a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. And just keep the, um, the mixer sort of going and moving all around the bowl while you do so. Should I check on our tomato? Yeah. Check on our tomato. You might want to flip it over so it gets nice and brown. And the thing about making a homemade mayo is that um, you want to make sure that you get all of that oil in. And, and really, you want to start with a fresh oil. Mm -hmm. So you're going to really taste that oil flavor. Okay. And so you want to make sure that you start with maybe a bottle that hasn't been opened yet. Okay. Because there, if there's any off flavors, you're going to taste them okay. in the mayonnaise. I like to use a canola because it's a relatively mild flavored oil. Okay. You could use an olive oil if you wanted to. But olive oil does have a flavor of its own. It does, and it can be very strong if you use an extra virgin olive oil in particular. Okay. Um, but a lot of people use grapeseed oil or mm -hmm. mi mix some oils together, like olive oil and canola oil. This takes literally minutes to do. And normally when you do it by hand, it's, so it's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes. So it's the oil in the egg? It's just the oil in the yolk. Yes. Yes. And so as you can it's see, awesome. as this blends in, and I like to use a high-sided bowl, as you can see, and this actually has a rubber ring on the bottom. Yeah, you can pull that out. Okay. That's perfect. This is going to thicken up very much so. And so as you're making the mixture, I'm getting that last little bit of oil in there. If it gets too thick, you can put a few specks of water in there. All right. And that will thin it out. I'm going to actually turn the mixture up. All right. This actually looks pretty good. But I want you to taste it because when you first make it, the lemon juice really comes through. Mm -hmm. Then when you refrigerate it, the lemon notes will kind of mellow a bit. Okay. Okay. So we're done. That was like... So it's going to... Um, it might not be the color of what you're used to getting. No, it's going to be a little bit different. Okay. A little bit different. So okay. if you'll, ex let's see, let's just take a spoon here. Okay. Do you want to try that? Sure. Yeah. And it should have like a nice little heat to it as well. That is really good. <laughs> it's so much better than what you can get in the jar, that is really you know? Good. I can imagine how that would taste on a sandwich. Yeah, well, we're going to see what okay. that tastes like so on a sandwich. It. It's really spending the time with it. Right. Well, and it didn't take a lot of time because we used the hand mixer that does all the work for right. you. If you did it by okay. hand, it'd be 15 to 20 minutes. All right. All right. We're going to make these sandwiches up when we go to the commercial break. But if you want to get these recipes, uh, write us here at the station, P.O. Box 6 Birmingham 35201, or you can go to WBRC.com or the WBRC News app. But Rebecca's going to make up some great sandwiches, and we'll take a look at them at the end. Back in a moment. Thanks. Rebecca. Thank you.